coast to coast, border to border, and around the world. It's time for The Bill Alexander Show. The Bill Alexander Show is a guest-driven program where the topics are diverse and entertaining. Laugh and learn while you listen to one of the best hours of online radio. Now, here's your host, Bill Alexander. Hi, everyone. Yours truly, William Eric Alexander. Everybody calls me Bill, and you're on The Bill Alexander Show. So great to have you join me today. And I hope everything's going fine wherever you're at and whenever you're listening. On the phone today is a real treat. You know this woman from the Mary Tyler Moore show. You know her from the airplane movie and also the happy, happiest millionaire. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about Joyce Boulefont. Joyce, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you so much. And it seems lately I've been getting a lot of people calling or writing about match games. Yes. I had no idea so many people watch that. You were um you were you were a big uh a big face on T V game shows in the nineteen seventies, weren't you? I sure was and I did so many pilots uh also for game shows. So it's been it's been an incredible journey, it really has. So I, I feel very blessed. I was gonna talk about this later, but I'll bring it up now since you did. Game yeah. shows, what was so intriguing about being on those programs? Well, you know, it's, I'm going to tell you a quick story. I had a, I was doing the play Vanities in Chicago, and my whole background has been theater. And then suddenly I'm doing TV and doing the game shows. And um, my manager called and said, Joy, I don't want you to do those game shows anymore. You're an actress, and, <laughs> and you're get, be known as a celebrity and not an actress. And I said, oh, okay, if that's what you think. And part of me was a little relieved because it was always Sunday afternoon, and I liked being with all the children on Sunday, so I had to take, I wrote to the children going to, going to work to go with me. And uh, then I uh, went to, was walking to the theater, and this lady bumped into me, and she said, what is it you do for me? And I said, I, I beg your pardon? She said, do you work at my market? I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't. And she said, oh, what about my cleaners? I said, no, she's my hairdresser. I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't. And I kept walking, and all of a sudden, she ran up, she turned around, she gave me a hug, and she said, I know what it is you do for me. You make me laugh. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm not going to give up the game shows if it makes people laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what was intriguing about doing game shows. So when you did the game shows, um, so, for example, you were on Match Game. Did they tell yeah. you how risque you could give the answers? Or did you know, because, again, it was 1970s and there was only so far you could push the envelope? Uh, they didn't tell us anything except Mark Goodson for, forbade me to do uh, Hollywood Squares. He said, if you do Hollywood Squares, you can never come back and do Match Game. And I, was, I said, yes, sir. Why is um, that? But I don't know. I don't know, but I listen to it. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I don't think he really had any right to do that. But right. Uh, he just wanted me to do his show, so I was happy that he asked me. Uh, no, we were never told anything, and uh, mostly my silly, crazy answers were because I'm dyslexic, and I can't sew, and you had to show Gene Raber, and you had to take out the thing that you wrote was the right. answer, and uh, and show the uh, Gene. So... I was terribly embarrassed because... Uh, let's come here. Oh, here. But this way, come on. Because I couldn't tell you that sometimes the answers were a little obscure and sometimes very risque, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> sometimes things had to be explained to me why I was being risque. Who I, I am blonde. <laughs> so maybe that was it. I don't know. So, but I um, it, one day I had to write what 
what it said. What, what the, there was nothing I could think of. And okay. I could not spell it. I think it, was, I think it was stethoscope. That's a pretty hard one. And I thought, well, if I put it up and show it really quick and put it back in the slot, he won't see it. I just do it really fast. I'll say it and put it back. And he came towards me and I took it out and went, here's it and put it back. And he said, oh, my God, I can't believe she got it right. And then he took a few steps away and he turned around and he said, let me see how you spell that. And my heart just sank. And I gave it to him to show the whole world how I couldn't spell. Uh-huh. And of course, he didn't know. He didn't know. But that was a, that was a rough moment for me. So one of the most iconic roles that you're known for is as Marie Slaughter on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Now, yes, and actually, yeah, I I didn't do that many. I did several, but I was also at the same time doing uh, two other series. I was doing uh, the very first Bill Cosby show where he played a school guidance counselor. Uh huh. And and I, excuse me, one minute. I'm a very naughty no, dog. Stop right now. I played the school guidance counselor, and and he played the basketball coach, and I played the school guidance counselor. And then I was doing another show called Love Thy Neighbor with Ron Maynard, and uh, I was so busy, I couldn't always be there when they needed me. So I think they probably got Georgette because they wanted to have a wife, you know, be part of the whole thing. Right. And Georgette was wonderful. Well, she was wonderful. And I got to do it when I could. But one day they called and said, can you come in for a table read today? And I said, not really. I'm in the labor room. <laughs> 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 that was that didn't work out that day. <laughs> Now, the question I have, and and I hate to say it, because of of you being on the show, and as you said, you weren't on there very often, but you were recognizable enough because you were Gavin McLeod's wife, that would you consider yourself the last surviving member of the Mary Tyler Moore show? Oh, my gosh. I'm afraid that might be true. There was John Amos was on it. And there were a few other times, other people appeared a few times, but I don't think that they were the main characters, right. you know, that came back all the time. Um, but it's a very strange feeling, and I've been doing a lot of interviews lately, and I think they want, thinking they want to get hold of me before I kick off. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, earlier this year, I had the opportunity to talk to... Uh, Joanne Worley about Betty White, who we were all rooting to reach 100 years of age. Unfortunately, she didn't make it. But um, uh, her career that expanded over a lot, multiple lifetimes uh, of many people, of many generations. How was it working with Betty White? Oh, she was an absolute dear heart. She really was. She said about me, she said, you know, when, uh, excuse me, whenever Joyce tells a dirty joke, it sounds like a nursery rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> so that gave me a lot of leeway, right. anyway. And then she, she wanted me to go on the road and do a play with Alan that she couldn't do, and it was a role she had played when they fell in love. And I thought that was very sweet. She wanted me to do that. But I, what a wonderful actress. Let's talk about in your windows and risque ideas. I love it. <laughs> and, and, and again, from her career of doing the Betty White show, a date with the angels and then Mary Tyler Moore and then golden girls. And then, um, what was the last one done? She did with Valerie Bertinelli. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, Cle- hot in Cleveland. that's it. Hot again, mm-hmm. just, yeah. just amazing to be able to do that. Now, there is one program, and I've told people about this, and they think I'm crazy. It only yes. lasted one season for 13 episodes. And I was a kid when this came on the air in 1976, which was Big John, Little John. <laughs> I yes. love this show. 
and you had That's um, so fun. Herb Elderman as Big John and Robbie Wrist as Little John, and you played <laughs> Mom. Yeah. How was the concept yeah. per- pitched to you? Because, again, it was created by Sherwood Schwartz, which you had a dealing yeah. with earlier on. But how was this program pitched to you that we're going to have a 40-year-old middle school student? <laughs> I thought it was a very funny and clever idea. And I just adored Sherwood. And because he was upset that I wasn't doing the Brady Bunch, which he had wanted me to do, he and ABC at the last minute wanted Florence. It all worked out just great in the end right. because she was wonderful. But he said, the next thing I do, you're in it. So I wouldn't have dared turn him down. I thought it was a great, fun concept. But it was a Saturday morning show, really. Right. Do you think the show would have lasted longer if it would have been done in, say, prime time? Because I think the concept was very elaborate for a kid to understand. Um, it very well may have. You know, it was, um, I, I know I went to London and I got to my hotel room and I turned the TV on and there was Big John, Little John. So it was, I think, very popular. So you made a comment earlier um, when we were talking about this program that you were considered to play Carol Brady on the Brady Bunch. What happened? I wasn't considered. I wasn't considered. I was signed, sealed, wardrobe, and ready to go. And uh, ABC in New York, Florence Henderson suddenly became available. And they called Sherwood and they said, we we want Florence. And Sherwood fought for me because he wanted it to be more like the Lucy show. And he said, if Florence does it, it's going to be more like the Donna Reed show. Ah. And they had to recast the housekeeper because when I was doing it, the housekeeper was a straight person and I was the funny one. Right. And so they had to have Florence be straight and have... Um, What's her name? I've gotten her name. Alice, Alice B. Davis. Um, yes, wonderful actress. Uh, they had to have her be the funny one. So they had to recast everything. It, were you ready to go into production for that? Um, I mean, how close was it to the original production date that you got pulled from the cast? Oh, oh like three days. Wow. Um, it was the little girls were all cast to look like me. I had, was fully wardrobed. I was showing the director and Sherwood my wardrobe. And I think that was maybe Friday before we start shooting on Monday. And every time I came out and said, now this is the dress she wears in the wedding and the garden wedding. And this is the suit she wears, the going away suit. And this, and the third time I came out, I looked at them and I thought, it's really funny. They're not saying, what about another color? What about a scarf? What? They never just say, okay. Right, right. <laughs> and I said, I said, is something wrong? And I said, sit down, Joyce. Oh. And they told me that they were fighting for me, but that evening they would know. And that evening, instead of calling me, Sherwood came over to the house and told me. And I was just divorced with two little children, and I... I've always felt that things happen for a reason. And later in life, not too long after that, I had my own Brady Bunch when I married William Asher. I had eight children wow. walking down the aisle. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so everything happens for a reason. Were you, I, think. I mean, I, mean I, would, I would think that that happening three days before going into production, were you resentful? about what happened and were you rethinking your career going how did Florence Henderson who just became available got this part over me who's been working this for how many weeks wardrobes ready to go I mean was there any animosity there whatsoever that show been okay (laughs) and and I there wasn't any at all and Florence is a lovely lady I liked her as a friend and, um, no, there wasn't. I was, I was sad. I, it was hard to understand 
because I didn't know that ABC could come in at the last minute in New York and and change everything, that they had a final say. I didn't know that. I thought it was a done deal. Right. I was all signed. And But yeah, they did give me a gift. What they was that? They gave me the going away suit. <laughs> Very appropriate. <laughs> and the suitcases, too, mm-hmm. right? Um, right. The suitcases <laughs> to go with it. So... <laughs> When, when you look at it and you look at the TV you've been on and, and Mary Tyler Moore, you were there on and off from 70 to 77, but everything else you did TV wise only lasted about one season. Was there any other, uh, other sitcoms or anything being developed for you or was that the Brady Bunch was basically it? Uh, no, I did a series. The first one I did was called Tom, Dick, and Mary at Universal, mm-hmm. which was review. And I had a wonderful contract where I had to do a pilot for them every year. And I had to do a guest starring role eight a year. Wow. And I could work any place else. It was the best contract anybody could ever have. And I did uh, Tom, Dick, and Mary, and that lasted I don't know. I think we did 24. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It was so different then. You did many more than they do today. And, um, and then I would get pregnant and, or I'd go off with my husband who who was James MacArthur at the time and be on location with him. Or if I just had a baby, I'd stay home and be with the baby till I felt, you know, do that at least for a year. And I, I just, I would, bounced back and forth and I did a lot of westerns and um, I'm trying to think of other series. I did one called The Flow Show which was a spin-off of Alice uh-huh. and uh, actually I asked to leave that show because it was a very unhappy set. Okay. Um, I, I don't know um, and then I did Love Thy Neighbor was my favorite and that was number three in the nation. When we were on, that was ABC. It was Marty Starger after, um, after the Brady Bunch. He, uh, they had me go for an audition. I said, it's ABC. I'll never get it. Marty <laughs> Starger doesn't like right. me. And I got, I got the lead. And, um, that was great. It was number three in the nation. It was talked about a lot because it was a black couple and a white couple who were friends. And, um, and it was wonderful director, Hal Cooper directed it. It was great fun, but we were only on for the summer. We were only due to be on for the summer because Julie Harris was coming in in a show called Over the Pickle Factory. Well, that show didn't do very well, so they wanted to put us back on, uh-huh. which they did, but they didn't tell anybody. They didn't do any publicity. They didn't, they changed the time slot. And so it just didn't do as well because nobody knew we were back. Right. And there was there was a joke at the time about the Vietnam War. They said, if you want to get rid of the Vietnam War, put it on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's <laughs> <Right? laughs> um... what. So, so when you we did these, you did these programs. Um... And you've you've mentioned some of your favorites. Do you still get residuals off anything, or has that all dried up and disappeared? No, I do. Sometimes I get one cent, <laughs> and one time I got a check that was all zeros. <laughs> it costs more for postage. Sometimes, <laughs> but sometimes I get a nice little check to go out take a friend to lunch or okay, something. Okay, well. Um, so you have a book out that is called uh, My Four Hollywood Husbands. And mm-hmm. I did not realize that you were married to James MacArthur, which most people know he him didn't. from the TV program Hawaii Five O and the famous line Bookum Dano. Um, right. It, 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 and, and he is the son of the great stage actress Helen Hayes. Yes. How was that being married to a son of a theater icon? Well, Helen and I were so very close. We really were like mother and daughter. 
I called her mom, and when she introduced me, she'd say, this is my daughter, Mary, I mean, Joy, um, because she lost her daughter to polio oh. when she was 19. So we were very close, and one of the hardest things about leaving that marriage was hurting Helen. Uh -huh. That really bothered me. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a whole weekend in her honor and Charles MacArthur's honor in Nyack in October. Uh, Pretty Penny, their home, is going to be a literary landmark. And I am uh, putting together some things for that weekend, including uh, the show that I do called Remembering Helen Hayes with Love. Oh, that sounds very nice. And it's all about our relationship, yes. I, I think it is. <laughs> And and then you were married to Edward Mallory, which has a connection to where, actually, a connection to where I'm at, because I'm sitting right in the middle of where he went to school, which was Carnegie Mellon University, and that is to the west of me, and to the east of me is Frostburg State University, where he was an artist <laughs> in residence, which basically right. I'm, I'm dead, almost dead center in the middle of the two where I'm sitting <laughs> right now, which is you don't hear many people from Frostburg State University. Uh, no, that's great. I and, love that. And Cumberland, Maryland also is not far from either. And then he passed away, unfortunately, in Salisbury. But he played Dr. Bill Hurt, Hort, Horton, I can get it out, on Days of Our Lives. How did you and he meet after the divorce of your first husband? Uh, we were in a workshop together, a professional workshop. And uh, he ended up directing a play, actually, that Roger Perry, my beloved husband, uh, he, we were both in it. And um, Roger and I were dating that year, but it wasn't going so well. And um, when <laughs> he broke up with me, because he wanted to move in and, and not be married and have a baby, and that's what people were doing then. Right. I said, no, sir, Re, I have two little children. I don't do that. <laughs> and so he broke up with me thinking he'd come back in about six months, and I would have changed my mind. Instead, I married in. <laughs> One of his best friends. <laughs> you just, I'm just slippery. I'm just slippery that way. <laughs> And then you married uh, William Milton Asher, who was also married to Elizabeth Montgomery. And you were yes. wife number three. So how did that, yes. how did, I mean, you're really getting associated with Never of, mind. You just watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I don't know. I'm very square. Most people just kind of dated. Right. But I, I'm very old-fashioned, and so I marry people. <laughs> and we were married for 20 years. And, uh, and Elizabeth uh, let me raise three of her children, well, two of the boys. Uh -huh. And uh, Rebecca would come on the weekends, and we just had a wonderful family. We're all very, very close. And um, for... For Bill's seventy fifth birthday, I think it was, he was just newly married, and his wife called me and said, "I don't know his friends, would you help me with this party?" I said, "Sure." So we had everybody there: his first wife and me, and his brand new wife. Unfortunately, Elizabeth had passed away. Uh -huh. But um, and his first wife and I brought a birthday cake out, and we sang like Marilyn Monroe. Violet, stop, stop. Your mom is talking. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. And the gentleman he's barking out can't hear because he's got earphones on. Violet, stop it. So, um, anyway, we came out with a birthday cake singing, Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Because he had directed the Marilyn Monroe Happy Birthday segment right. to uh, the president. So it was great fun. We're one big happy family. And then, 
So when I go through and look at the names, the, the first three of your husbands were tied to the industry. Your fourth husband, uh, Glade Bruce Hansen, was he also an actor or? Not uh, in a certain way, but not in the business. Okay. <laughs> that lasted, we were married January 1st and separated uh, March 17th. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned a lot by then. So do you consider him one of the four, or is he just a blip on the screen? He's an absolute blip. It <laughs> never should have happened. <laughs> Not at all. And no, then, and then Roger and I, met, that, was, that was wonderful. We just had, we had fallen in love without saying a word to each other about it in 1962. And we carried that in our heart that's amazing and through different marriages uh, but we never that never went away and then in 2000 after march 17th um we got together and dated in baby steps i uh -huh. mean real baby steps because can you imagine finally being with the love of your life i mean you you never have let that person go from your heart right and even though I was very much in love with my other husband. Uh, Roger was always in my heart. And um, his best friend, Norman, always let us know where each of us were. And, oh, this is my son. I, I have to let him not call him back. Uh, there. Um, and here we were, and, and gradually, two years later, we got married in 2000. Uh, two. And his previous and then, wife was Joanne Worley. That's right, yes. Uh, and I know he tried very hard to make that marriage work. So, I even gave him hints because I wanted him to be happy. Uh -huh. And I even gave him hints about things that he might do to make it better. Right. Because we were in touch once in a while. And... um and and she's such a wonderful person and a great actress, and I I felt very sad that she felt that I had anything to do with with their divorce because they he was out the door by by the time I was getting out the door with the crazy person. Right. Um, he was <laughs> he he was already gone, and it just was a coincidence that he had left his marriage, and, and I left mine. Right. It was totally fake. It really was. So what is the book basically about? Is it about your relationships with your husbands and how life was, or are you telling, and I don't like to use this word, are you telling secrets about the marriages? Actually, the book took 24 years to write. And it was going to be called Home Sweet Home, Where Is It? Okay. Because I've lived in so many, I've lived so many different places. But then Roger and I were married, and uh, a good friend who's an author said, Joyce, I have the title for your book, because I had sort of put it away. And I said, what? He said, my four Hollywood husbands. I said, Bruce, that's disgusting. I would <laughs> never call my book that. I said, that is so tasteless. And then I thought about it, and I thought, what if I, what if I do talk about my husband and why I married them and what I went through, uh -huh. and use that title? Maybe it would help people. And so I took a whole different tack on it, and wrote about the fact that all of my husbands were alcoholics, and how I fed into the disease of alcoholism and how you can, how, how sad it is in a family, how much it affects the children and, and the help you can get so that you can go on and have a happy ending. Mm -hmm. And Roger, when he passed away, had been sober 24 years. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. So whenever you... Otherwise, you... it wouldn't have worked. Right. <laughs> So I had learned too much. <laughs> so how many movies did you do? Because I think one of the most famous films 
And one of the most hilarious films was the 1980 film Airplane. And oh, yeah. you, <laughs> you played mm-hmm. the mother of the young lady who was on the love boat, um, who mm-hmm. played the daughter of Gavin McLeod, um, right. who needed a heart transplant. And, right. <laughs> and it was so interesting. <laughs> when they approached you with this script, what did you say when you read it the first time? I said, this is ridiculous. It's crazy. I thought, well, I said, I didn't say that to the writers. I wouldn't be so unkind. I might be today, but I wasn't then. And I said it to Bill. I said, this is ridiculous. This script does not make any sense at all. There are people coming down the baggage claim. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't want to do this. And Bill looked at me and he said, you are an actress. You act. I said, yes, sir. And I went on the set and I did it. And we were all walking around that mock airplane saying, do you think this is going to be funny? <laughs> <laughs> we had no idea. We had no idea. Well, what's interesting about it is when I knew um, we were going to talk, and it, it was all coincidental, my 17, soon to be 18 year old son said, Dad, you got to watch this movie. And it was Airplane. I said, Andy, you do realize I saw it when it came out. And he goes, yeah, I said, and we're watching the movie, and he's giggling because the humor there we could not get away with using today. And there you are sitting there on the plane. I go, that's Joyce. I'm going to be talking to her in a few weeks. He goes, wow, she's in a big movie. (laughs) I'm going, yes. Oh, that's so funny. That's so cute. So, again, as I just said, the humor we could never get away with making that film again. Oh, no, not at all. (laughs) And um, (laughs) because you had, um, you were in it, you also had, um, oh, why did I, Barbara Billingsley was in it. um, And she she was doing the um, Ebonics, I guess, of the time, which again, if you don't understand that, that that period of time in the United States, you wouldn't understand where the humor is. And it was just right. so funny. And again, being able to do that and your daughter's, the girl that played your daughter's heart coming from the Mayo Clinic and what they have on the walls with nothing but Mayo jars with uh, different organs in them, <laughs> which were, were ridiculous. Oh, so really funny. Other, Very funny. The, so have you done other major motion pictures? Well, the one I loved so much was The Happiest Millionaire for Uh Disney because I got to sing and dance. And uh, Mr. Disney came down the day I was going to record my song, put his arm around me, walking me to the the sound stage, and he said, Little lady, I have big plans for you. And then he died. (laughs) It was very nice. (laughs) You had the opportunity to work with Fred McMurray in that film. How was it to work with him? It was fine. I really didn't do a scene with him. Okay. But I traveled with him when we were promoting and and doing premieres. Um, I went on the plane on Disney's private plane with Fred and and his wife and and the Sherman Brothers. And that was great fun. Really fun. I do remember one night in Salt Lake City, the premiere. <laughs> it was held up because Fred forgot his toupee and had to go back to the hotel to get it. And uh, Richard and I started singing some of the songs from the movie while we waited for him to get his toupee. <laughs> <laughs> and you also got to work with a young actor of the time who was born in Pittsburgh, which I did not know that until just now, by the name of John Davidson, who went on to hosting game shows that's right that's right and i i people used to duck when they saw me coming because i was always asking them to do benefits for children's needs and for dyslexia and everything else so they see me and they hide around the corner but john was one of the nice ones who who did do a benefit for me <laughs> so how difficult was it to work in hollywood to memorize lines and have dyslexia. How did how did you how were you able to overcome that, or at least work with it? Well, 
I learned how to cope with it, but whenever I lectured, and I lectured oh, over a hundred lectures one year as the uh, promoting public awareness about dyslexia at schools and colleges and all over, and including before the Queen of Spain, and um, not the Queen, the royal family. The Queen mm-hmm. wasn't there. I met her later, uh, but it. I ha- I told everyone, teach drama to children who have trouble learning to read, because in drama, the words have meaning. It's a multi multi sensory approach to learning. You see it, you say it, you become it, and that's what you do when you're acting. I mean, you you walk across the stage, you open the door, you're happy to see someone. Hello, come in. Well, the word, that's suddenly, hello, come in, means something. It's not just black letters on a white page. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That That's really interesting because, unfortunately, in education today, we're seeing the arts being cut from the program. Oh, it's terrible. But it's, yeah, it's terrible. The way you're talking, and again, it makes all the sense in the world to me, that if you give purpose to the words that the kids are reading, it's going to make it easier and better for them to understand. Exactly. Exactly. And that's how I got through. And memorizing wasn't the problem. Uh, It was reading. And I still misread words all the time. And my hearing isn't so good, so I don't hear that well either. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a mess, but I'm fine. (laughs) Well, I look at people and say, "Did you say that?" So, so I was volu- I was volunteering in the in the ER. I was a patient um, and family advocate, and I went into this lady one day, and I said, "May I get you anything? Would you care for a warm blanket or some juice, or is there anything I can get you?" And she said, "I need you to pay my bill," and I said, "Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry." But I can't pay your bill. She said, what? I said, I need a pain pill. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's how it was for me when I volunteered in the ER room. <laughs> so when you're, when you're out in public, do people recognize you when they see you? Mostly when they hear my voice, okay. which I think is like everybody else's. But then they look and they... They turn their heads, and I think, where am I talking to loud? <laughs> and um, yeah, a lot of people do. Right? I'm, I'm always surprised that I was on the airplane the other day, and the stewardess came and knelt down by the aisle, and she said, I recognize who you are. And the man sitting next to me said, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> then he almost jumped out of his seat. He was really funny, so I told him about my book, and he stood up. In the airplane, he said, everybody, I want you to go buy my four Hollywood husbands. <laughs> I said, they're, they're going to think you don't like women if you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be misconstrued. So are you... Yes, yeah, it could. Are you retired? Are you still doing work? What are you doing right now? Right now I'm doing, uh, getting ready to do... Um, Remembering Helen Hayes with Love okay. in Nyack in, in the fall. And I am ready, willing, and able, able to uh, work. They do things so differently today, though. You can't go in and meet with the people and read for them and find out what it is they want. They send a script, and you look at a, a video camera, and you pretend you're doing the role they want you for and or are not or you're trying out for right and you don't know what you don't know what they want if you meet with them in person and you do it one way they can say you know we're looking for could you try it this way and then they can see if you take direction they can see if you have timing but the way they do it today you can't tell all those things and so i don't think when i audition i I think I've only done three videos or something like that. I don't think I do that well because you're you're talking to a daggum thing. You know, right. there's not a person there to do timing with you and 
It just like and I and you don't know what they want. It could be interpreted interpreted many different ways. Yeah, you can't you can't see the reaction that that you need to see no. when, you're, when you're acting. Um, what was have you done any TV work recently within the last say ten years? Um, I did. I'm just trying to think. I've done several movies that my son directed, and he's a director and a writer and an actor, and I've done several of those. So do you uh, have to audition great. for your yeah. son? Yes, I did. <laughs> because I, I did. <laughs> um, and he makes pretty risque movies sometimes. They're, um, they're very funny, but they're a little naughty. Okay. And when I'm working with him, I, I sometimes have to say, honey, I have to say this word. What does it mean? He says, never mind, Mom. Just say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yes, I've been doing films with him. Okay. Um, but, see, the thing that gets me is is that you have, again, like you said, you, you have a very recognizable uh a voice, and I'm, I'm looking at photos, recent photos of you right now, and you have a very recognizable face. That to me, it's amazing that someone just hasn't said, you know what, I need uh, someone to play this role, and Joyce would be the perfect person to do it. Let's bring her in and let's try I'm her out. I'm sitting here at. waiting. <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting. Just put it out there. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, Joyce is available if anybody's looking for somebody. Um, but that, <laughs> That's right. That's right. But, um, Joyce, this has been a pleasure. I really appreciate it. And I'm so, so thankful that we were finally able to get connected because we've tried to do this I a couple of times. I'm... And unfortunately, the first time you were getting ready to go somewhere for a dinner and then we uh, rescheduled it for today. Right. Well, thank you for working around my schedule. And uh, also, sorry for my little dog's interruptions. That's perfectly but, fine. <laughs> I'm sitting out here looking at a lake and the mountains and palm trees, and it's beautiful. It, it, I, when, before we started, I could hear birds in the background, which is very That's calm right. and peaceful. Where I'm at, uh, south of the city of Pittsburgh, it's been pouring down rain for the last four hours, and we've been under a I tornado warning. You. So. Oh, that's not good, but I can't tell you how I miss rain. Every day you wake up in the desert and you say, another beautiful day. (laughs) Give me some weather. Give me some weather. We, everybody, Florida needs rain. We need rain. New Mexico, everybody, it's really bad right now. And I, I understand you're going on a cruise next week? I am going, uh, yes, I'm going, not on a cruise, actually. I am going to be a flower girl in a wedding in Italy. And I've been a a bride many times, but never a flower girl. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm very excited. And then I come back, and then I go on a cruise, what, tripping with a girlfriend uh, from Avignon to Paris. And that's in August. Oh, that sounds nice. That's going to be Oh, and then I'm getting on the Queen Mary and coming home across the Atlantic on the Queen Mary. Wow, you, have a, bu- you have a busy schedule coming up. Well, it's my 85th year, and I thought I'm going to do everything I can while I can do it. Because I have a lot of friends who have become suddenly ill or something, and I just want to keep doing everything I can, including working. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well... Joyce, thank you very much. This was a total pleasure on my part. I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck to you. Good luck on the book. And if anything new comes up, please let me know. I'd love to have you back on the program again. You're so sweet. And good luck and congratulations to your son. I will pass that along to him. Thank you very much. Joyce, you have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you next time. All righty. Bye-bye, Bill. Bye-bye. Hey, a big thank you goes out to Joyce Bolifon for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Had a great time talking to her about her book, about her TV career, about everything that she has done. And it was a total pleasure. Joyce, again, thank you very much for joining me. And everyone else, thank you for listening. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time here on The Bill Alexander Show. 
Thank you for listening to The Bill Alexander Show. The Bill Alexander Show is a million-dollar baby production. For more information, go to thebillalexandershow.com.